Hey guys, what is going on? So, like I said earlier, in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about the differences in different breathing patterns in the butterfly stroke. So, lately on the Swim Techniques Instagram account, I've been getting a lot of people saying, Lucas, why are you breathing every stroke when you do butterfly? You know it's not faster, right? You know that it actually pushes you into more drag. You don't get the same distance. A lot of things like that. So I decided I'd make this video for you guys to kind of, um, I guess to kind of squash some of those misconceptions and to kind of show you the difference between breathing every stroke versus not breathing every stroke why it is that I choose to breathe every stroke and how that breathing pattern got me to be the youngest kid to break two minutes, win national championships and things like that. So again, if you guys uh, watch a lot of our content, if you are in our courses, if you watch our Instagram lives, things like that, you'll know that it's swim techniques. I especially I'm all about swimmers having different strokes. So what I mean by that is you and I, for instance, probably don't have the same body type. We probably don't do the same kind of training. Actually, I'm sure we don't do the same kind of training and we definitely don't have the same race plans. So why would we swim our butterflies absolutely identical? If you look at an Olympic final of a 200 butterfly, all those guys are going between 151 and 153. Not that big of a difference in time, right? But the way that each of those swimmers are swimming is completely different. Look at the strokes. Michael Phelps has a completely different stroke from Chad DeCole, who has a drastically different stroke from Laszlo Che, swimmers like that. So. That's why I think having Olympian courses and things like that is great because you can take secrets from all the best swimmers around and make it into something that's your own. So now that we have a little bit of the context out of the way, let's dive into the actual technical reasons behind this. So if you guys are watching this video, you'll see that I am a very leg driven swimmer. If you're in our butterfly secrets course, you know I talk so much about the hang time butterfly, why that's such a powerful tool for swimmers, especially swimmers who have very good dolphin kicks. It allows you to keep moving yourself forward. And what I'm talking about with hang time is that second kick, that kick out the back of your stroke, that for me, especially being a leg dominated swimmer, that is the engine behind my butterfly. That's the thing that keeps me going. So from my point of view, it's very important for me to be able to maximize that as much as possible. Obviously at the end of a race, I'm going to get tired. I'm not going to be able to hold it as much and you'll be able to see my stroke actually break down in this video. I don't like to show people that, but believe it or not, it does happen to everybody. So, for me, breathing every stroke allows me to actually get on top of the water, have a really nice two-arm freestyle. If you're watching my stroke here, my lower back actually does not really enter the water at any point of my race, except for, again, when I start to get a bit tired. Um, so that means that I have pretty much minimal, almost no drag throughout this race. I'm staying on top of the water. I'm sure you've heard a lot of coaches saying that when you breathe in butterfly, it should almost be like, um, like your chin is grazing the surface of the water, and that's totally right. And for me, breathing every stroke allows me to maintain that body position and to keep myself constantly moving forward. If I breathe one up and then put my head down, when my head's down in the water, I'm going to be pulling straight into drag. Like I said, everybody's a little bit different though. So there's some swimmers out there who love breathing every second stroke or who love going two up, one down. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if the thing with that is you have to cater it to your strengths. For some swimmers who maybe aren't as leg driven, it's going to make them more powerful. It's going to allow them to really, really work on that high elbow catch, extending their lats and pulling themselves through their butterfly. That is great. And if it works for you, then that's awesome. 
I guess what I'm trying to say, and the main point of this video, guys, something that I wish more coaches taught, was that one, at least for me, one of the funnest things about swimming is being able to experiment, being able to try new, different things. This works, that doesn't work. The thing is, the clock doesn't lie to you. So keep experimenting, keep having fun, and tell me which one you prefer down below in the